मूकं करोति वाचालं पंगुं लंघयते गिरिं यत्कृपा तमहं वंदे परमानंदमाधवं स्थापकाय च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते नमः रत्नाकराधौतपदां हिमालयकिरीटिनीं ब्रह्मराजर्षिरत्नाढ्यां वंदे भारतमातरं सदाशिवसमारंभां शंकराचार्यमध्यमां अस्मदाचार्यपर्यंतां वंदे गुरुपरंपरां Welcome everyone for the story session and the first story that we are taking. One of the beautiful stories in the Upanishadic lore. Let's go back in the having a time machine in our hand. How many years back? Time before Jesus and even Moses. Before Homer wrote the Iliad and Odyssey. Before even the Buddha and Mahavira bringing some revolution even before the Confucius and Zen brought light to this earth. Before even the whole world, if you see, there was not even a single culture, Samskriti, showing its light to the people, humanity. Go to that time, the Upanishadic time, the Hindu philosophy had flourished to the highest extent. At that time, let us go back. This is after the creation, Prajapati Brahma, Prajapati Brahma is the creator who created the entire universe of different lokas. Depending on the karma of the jiva, he places the jiva in that loka with the respective instrument of enjoyment, the sadhana, deha, sharira and the respective, how many ever punya you have done, you, you will get so many vishaya, the sense objects for enjoyment. So he has created three lokas like that, many stories. Define it in 14 levels, many in 7 levels, many in 2 levels. But this story takes up 3 lokas. What are those 3 lokas? Those jivas who have done more of punya, more and more of punya, they will be placed in a loka called the Deva Loka or Swarga Loka. And the people who stay there are called Devatas. Then the second type is those jivas who do more and more of papam, not so good things harming others. So they, they will be placed in one more loka called the Patala loka. The Patala loka and the people who stay there are called Asuras. But there will be many Jivas who would have done the Papa and Punya mixture, who will be fructifying their Papa and Punya mixture. So who, where should they live? They live with all of us like all of us. It is the Manushya loka. It is Punya Papa Mishrana. So the three lokas, it is Devatas, Punya, Adhikyam. Papa Adhikyam is Patala Loka. Punya Papa Mishranam is Manishya Loka. And Prajapati, being the creator of all three uh, lokas, he is like a father of all the jivas. And he has created all the uh, objects of enjoyment. He has given the instruments of enjoyment. He has given a good birth, everything and asked or uh, have uh, has given opportunity and freedom to enjoy life as they want and all three jivas have started enjoying their lives and they're quite comfortable but times time passed years passed generations passed centuries passed then all the three jivas the devatas the asuras and manushas were having kind of a vacuum a kind of depression, a kind of some something not so fulfilling in their life. Even after having the enjoyment through the objects that they had, even after enjoying with the sense organs they had, they were not feeling that fulfillment. They were not contented. So they were feeling that vacuum. They wanted to come out of that depression. Generally, whenever we feel lonely, whenever we feel depressed, we go to counselor. Definitely correct. But these jivas, they also thought, we need to go to a counsellor. But who that counsellor would be? Let us go to our own forefather, that is the Prajapati Brahma. So all the three jivas, they start, all the three jivas means the devatas, the asuras and the manavas. All the three started meditating and seeking instructions from Prajapati. And Prajapati, being the creator, being the father of all, he thought, I need to go, I need to ask what they want and give if they are asking a genuine thing. So, Prajapati decided, all the three jivas are meditating. 
Prajapati directly goes to the Swarga Loka or Devata Loka and asks gods, the demigods and gods, you are all praying for me, you are all seeking something, what do you want? What do you want? Then the Devas told, we are having a state of prolonged discontentment, a kind of vacuum in our heart, though there are objects, though there are pleasures, though there are sense organs, we are not able to appreciate it to the core. We are feeling a kind of boredom. So, please instruct us what is the way out. What is the way out? Prajapati was very happy. Finally, my kids have understood the problem. Let me give the instruction. So, Prajapati told, okay, I will give you the instruction. Then all the devas came close to them and holding their ear, making their ear big, they are listening with tight attention, rapt attention. Prajapati told, no, 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 don't worry, wait, wait. I am not going to give you a sermon. I am not going to give you a lecture or a discourse. I am going to give you one instruction. Okay, one instruction. Okay, what is that instruction? It is not even a sentence, not even a word. It's just a syllable, a letter. Okay, tell me, what is it? Prajapati told, my instruction to you is the. The, not English the. It is Samskrita the. And Devas were thinking, the one letter? Okay, fine. Prajapati asked, did you understand what I told? Did you understand what I intended to? Then Devas told, I think we have understood, but we will make a small uh, group discussion and we will come to a conclusion and we will tell you. Okay, go and, and uh, do a discussion. So they all the Devas come together and they started discussing what may be this da. And they come and tell, we have understood the topic that you intended us to understand. And many a times in school also, when a teacher says, have you understood, all students will say yes. But when, when a question was, uh, uh, when a question is asked, then students will say, um, we do not know. So Prajapati also felt, are they just telling for the telling sake or they have, did they have, have they understood? So he wanted to know. So he asked, what did you understand? Tell me so that I can verify it. Then Devas told, we are Devas. We are Devas. We live in this loka called the Swarga Loka. We are relatively immortal. We are relatively immortal. We are endowed with unlimited resources to enjoy unlimited objects and powerful sense, obje uh, sense organs to enjoy also. We have increased capacity of uh, enjoyment. We do not have hunger and thirst. Generally, we don't get old. We don't get disease. So much we are having. And more than that, all of these things we get without much, uh, without working too hard. Without working hard, we get all these things. Prajapati was thinking, okay, what is that you are trying to tell? This is the problem we have understood. What is the problem? Then the devas told, we are plunging ourselves in a sense of enjoyment mindlessly and relentlessly. Mindlessly and relentlessly we are enjoying more and more objects. It is weakening us. It is becoming a boredom. It is becoming more mechanical. It is becoming more materialistic. We are getting tired of it. We are getting bored of it. So the problem with us is overindulgence in sense objects. Prajapati thought, finally my children have got understood what the problem is. Then Prajapati told, correct, you have understood the problem right. But what is the solution that I gave? The devas told, you gave the wonderful solution as the. What is that the? Then the devas told, the means damyata, damyata in Sanskrit. It means need for exercising discipline towards self-restraint, sense control. If we don't do it, we are always in this boredom or a long state of state, a state of long uh, state of con discontentment. What comes with this? Because we are all given with freedom, but freedom comes with responsibility. Without responsibility, if we are using it, it becomes licentiousness and that is what has happened to us. Now you have given the message to us. What is that? Self-restraint. From today, we will follow your instruction. We will be more self-restrained, self-disciplined, self-controlled towards our sense objects and live our life happily. Is that what you told? Is the question asked by Devas. And Prajapati told, you have understood it right. You have got the point properly. Go and follow it. After this, Prajapati had one more travel, astral travel. 
he directly after the swarga loka he directly goes to the patala loka in patala loka who who stays who resides asuras asuras are also meditating prajapati brahma and seeking instruction so he goes prajapati goes and asks you are all praying so intensely with a desire for something so here i have come you are father so ask me what do you want what do you want the asuras told the same feeling what the devas had told what did what did they tell we are all having comfortable life we are enjoying all these things but still there is some vacuum there is some kind of discontentment there is some kind of an unfulfilled life that we are leading so we want a message we want an instruction from you to lead a happy peaceful contented and a meaningful life please instruct us and prajapati was very happy but because they are not asking for any boon that i want to become immortal i want this i want that but these asuras are also asking for what instruction teaching and prajapati told okay i will give you the teaching then the asuras told we are all a little dull headed people so i will call all the asuras and we will come a closer and uh, listen to your sermon properly and prajapati told no 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 don't worry don't worry i'm not going to give you a lecture i'm not going to give you a huge upanyasa i'm going to give you one instruction not a word not a sentence it's just one syllable one letter oh that simple asuras felt very happy oh we need not memorize all those things so one syllable please instruct us and prajapati once again told the same syllable the the samskrita the then asuras were like one letter the what is it everyone looked at each other and there was a spark in many of their eyes and then prajapati asked did you understand what i said we understood the letter but we are interpreting the message prajapati told go go and interact with all of you and uh, have a group discussion and come up with the answer then i will verify whether it is correct asuras felt very happy they went they had a group uh, conference then they were discussing group uh, discussion they were discussing what could it be the why we are having this problem and what could be the instruction given by the prajapati brahma to us to lead a meaningful life finally they came and told brahma prajapati father we have understood your message and many a times dull students also say we have understood the teaching so to verify prajapati asked can you tell me what you have understood so that i can tell whether it is right or wrong then one of the representative from the asura stood up and told prajapati brahma father pranams to you we are all the asuras we are called as the rakshasas we live in this loka called patala loka and and what are we if you see our nature what are we we are cruel in nature we are violent by nature we also enjoy but how by hurting others by injuring others by insulting others by harming others we are a kind of a saddest people where we get happiness by others sorrow we are deriving happiness but that's not giving contentment or meaning or fulfillment so we have understood the problem what is the problem we have understood the problem is we don't have compassion we are too cruel we are too violent and you have given us the solution prajapati was so happy that i thought these people are dull headed and they are proper they are taking the message properly i have i have the same thing to give in my mind so he asked okay you have understood the problem as violence but what is the solution that i gave asura told we have given the antidote of violence what is that compassion the is daya daya show compassion show sympathy to other beings and other things if you can show it then the enjoyment in you get will be much more meaningful much more fruitful this is what you have given right prajapati told you are right you are right what you have understood is proper go ahead live your life based on daya compassion so so happy the rakshasas also went ahead then there were a third kind of jiva those were waiting prajapati going to the swarga loka and patala loka but not yet come to our loka which is our loka it is manushya loka 
Prajapati comes to the Manisha Loka and started speaking to the Manishas, the Manavas. Manavas were feeling a kind of discontentment. So he directly came and asked the Manavas, What do you want, my children? You are all, uh, you are all praying me so intensely, so deeply. So tell me, what do you want from me? Manavas also didn't ask for any boon. They asked for an instruction. And Prajapati gave the same one syllable instruction. What is that? The. The. Manavas being intelligent, they could comprehend. And everyone comprehended in a different way. One person told da means this, the other person told da means that. And finally, they went for a group discussion. Finally, came up with one answer. One answer. Prajapati asked, did you understand? Yes, we have understood. What is that? Then the Manushas told, we are Manushas. We are li living in this loka called the Manusha loka or Bhu loka. If you see our lifestyle, we are naturally selfish and greedy. Greedy and selfish by nature itself. We try to hold things, appropriate things, store things, not just for our life, not just for our children, even for the generations to come. 10 generations, 15 generations, they can sit and aram say it. This is what, what we aspire for and we are working towards it. But even after working so much in a greedy way, in a selfish way, we are not finding the true happiness. We are not finding the true fulfillment in our life. I think you have given us the antidote for, it, uh, for that disease called greed. And Prajapati told, wonderful, you have identified the problem right. Because identification of the problem is the first step towards the solution. Then Prajapati asked, okay, you have identified the problem, but what was my instruction? It is the, what I, what I meant was the question asked by Prajapati. Then Manisha told, the means danam. Dhanam, meaning charity, donation, giving. And then people told, we are all so much, we are all deriving happiness in having, but you have given us an instruction, experience the joy of giving. Experience the joy of giving. It is more in giving you get, not by having is the instruction you have given. So from today, we are going to live a life based on this instruction that is the da danam prajapati felt very happy all three beings the devas understanding it as the dhamma self restraint asuras understanding it as daya compassion and humans understanding the same instruction as danam charity prajapati felt very happy and he went back making the sound of da 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 and disappeared from the scene this is the story which appears in the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad 5.2. Brihadaranyaka Upanishad 5.2. Now, the story seems very simple and most of us may be thinking, this is one of the bedtime stories which could be used for our children. Yes, definitely it's a bedtime story, but not to sleep, but to awaken the soul within. Awaken the soul within. Why? Because this, this explains how Hindus were ex having such great expertise in the human psychology. In the human psychology. Because this story looks mythological. Because the Asuras, the Devas and the Manushas, which we don't know, it looks mythological. But it is philosophical. It is having a symbolic message. It is down to earth and more than that, eminently observable in every human. Every human being. So, in that sense, it is most accessible and relatable to our lives directly. Now this is the story, but let's understand what we can derive out of this for our life to be more meaningful. The first and foremost, all jivas are put in some place, in some loka, whether it is in India itself or America or Canada or US or North Korea, whichever place, they are placed in such and such a place, not out of the choice by God, but out of the karma that you did. How much ever punya you have done, how much ever papa you have done, based on that, you will be placed in that loka with a body, how much ever you deserve it and the objects you desire for. That is also around. So God gives what you deserve and not what you desire. That is the first point. Next, when we start enjoying something, sometimes we get boredom or lonely or depression. 
we want to overcome that but when human efforts fail turn towards god turn towards god just like all the three beings when they were having that discontentment they turned towards a counselor the original counselor the prajapati brahma the god can be also turn our life at least a little bit of our life's attention towards god that is the message that uh, the story gives next Prab- prajapati brahma taught all the three jivas because all of them are his own children but only when they asked only when they asked just because all of them are their children he didn't give a sermon he waited for them to ask but most of us we give free gyan to all of them without even asking without even asking we just simply give and we say we are doing for the concern that we have towards them definitely i understand the intentions and concern you have towards them but if you want that teaching to enter into their heart and transform their life they should have that openness when they ask you uh, give advice otherwise you can bring awareness but you cannot impel or compel them towards that this is what is important and one more important thing if you understand all three beings they didn't ask for boon but they asked for teaching most of the times we if i ask if god comes in front of you what do you ask for we ask for this and that and many things but vidya or knowledge or gnanam is long lasting so that is what we need to aspire for seek for not the materialistic things because materialistic things come and go but knowledge will stay as long as you live so in that sense we need to think about the teaching and learning uh, parampara that we had and when prajapati brahma gave the instruction as the the three jivas interpreted in their own way in the similar way whenever we are communicating it could have been commun- interpreted in many ways even today when i am when i am giving this uh, story many of you may be interpreting the message in your own way so there are multiple interpretations possible for the same message that and more than that the next thing is important then what is correct which one is correct prajapati brahma told all are correct all are correct he didn't say oh daya no not correct oh dama not correct dana not correct this is what i meant no all are correct and why all are correct prajapati himself makes them understand you are all understanding and interpreting the message because you have understood the weakness in your heart in your own self whenever an elder person whenever a gnani whenever a vriddha whether it is gnana vriddha or vayo vriddha or tapo vriddha comes and tells you and we feel oh this message is directly for me why we know what our shortcomings are we know where we have to improve and that message would have been taken by everyone everyone interprets in their own way and takes that message as a message for life so first and foremost we know our weaknesses but the determination to work on that weakness needs to be catered to that is what is important in kannada they say kallan manas hullulge or kumbana kumbulakai kalla andre hegal mutkondu everyone knows their mistakes and shortcomings need to overcome that then who can change is whoever is willing to change and put effort they alone can change otherwise whatever may be the instruction how many ever motivational talks you make them to listen to it can support them in future but not now so whoever is having that willingness to change they alone can move in the path of progress so this is the message that we have got but if we see the lifestyle change then if we can bring the lifestyle change then and then alone we can find a transformation in our life when i say the 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 dama daya and danam most of you may be thinking it is a story a such a beautiful story but krishna encapsulates this in a single shloka in a single shloka where in the bhagavad gita he says 16.21 he says trividham narakasyedam dwaram nashanam atmanah there are three doorways to hell there are three doorways to hell if you are having the if you are and just check whether you, uh, whether you are in front of any of those you need not go after death krishna says here and now three doorways to hell what are those trividham narakasya idam dwaram nashanam atmanah that will destroy a person what are those three things kama krodha tatha lobham tasma etatrayam tyajet 
So what are those three things? He says Kamaha, Krodha, Lobha. Kamaha means not lust, it is desire. More extrovertedness. I want this, I want that, I want more. All these things. Our mind is seeking objects outside. So for a self for self inquiry, the concentration should not be outside, it should be inside. So extroverted sense organs should be controlled, restrained, disciplined to look within. This is the first lesson. For Kama, the antidote is Dhamma that was given to the Devatas. Krodha, the second is many of us unknowingly, whether we accept or not, we have the tendency when someone falls down, we laugh. We get happiness by others' uh, failures. We have hatred in our heart. We have anger. By uh, showing our anger, by being violent, we derive some happiness when someone has got hurt or harmed. So, Krodhaha. How to win over it? Uh, this story says, Daya. Daya. So, show Daya. Show compassion. Show compassion. The third doorway to hell is Lobhaha. Lobha means hoarding, storing, greed. All of us have it. All of us have it. But an antidote for this is Dhanam. Dhanam. Start giving. Start sharing. Once you start sharing, don't think yourself as just this body mind. Or don't think yourself as just this family. Think the whole world as your family. Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam. And start sharing. That will reduce the low bar. So in that way, Trividham Narakasiram. If you have to fight over all these three enemies within us, which are, which are doorways to hell, take this story as Dhamma, Daya and Dhanam. This is the teaching given by Upanishads, taken by Shri Krishna. Then even Patanjali gives Vitarka Badhane, Pratipaksha Bhavanam. If you have a negative trait, fight it with a positive of it, an antidote of it in his Patanjali Yoga Sutra. But not just that, even a 20th century, 20th century, greatest poet of 20th century, American, T.S. Eliot. His one of the best poems you can find is The Wasteland. The last three stanzas of this great poem called The Wasteland, the last three stanzas are dedicated each for this Dhamma, Daya and Dhanam. And he even concludes with the Samskrita words of Dhamma, Daya and Dhanam and ends with the, 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 hoping these three messages will be taken by the human mankind, the humanity. Shankaracharya in his Bhashya says, though the story is speaking about three types of beings, it is not speaking about one person, one living being or Asuras only ha should have that, Deva should have that and human should have this. All three are within us and Vedas or the Upanishads are catering to humans and humans alone. So all three, Daya, Dhamma and Dhanam is for an individual to better our lives and my last thing is, one more influence is, we all know one of the classical musical goddess India had was MS Subbalakshmi. She was asked to give a concert in UNO General Assembly. She was about to go. Before she went, she went to Kanchi Paramacharya and sought uh, his blessings. That day he was on Maunam. So he wrote a Sanskrit poem and said, please sing this in the UNO General Assembly. And what was that song? Maitrim Bhajata, Spardham Tyajata, Yuddham Tyajata, Maitrim Bhajata, Akhila Hrida Jaitri. It goes like that. And in between, there a line comes, Damayata, Datta, Dayadham Janata, meaning the, the, the. So, this story has inspired from millennia to millennia. Crores of people have inspired and they have become more compassionate. They have become more self-restrained, they have become more uh, giving oriented, contributor rather than a consumer. So let us also take the same message of the, 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 just like the Upanishads conclude, let me conclude with the same thing. Now it's rainy season and whenever rain comes, there will be a huge sound of thunder and lightning and you get a sound of the, the, the. The Upanishad says, whenever you hear that sound, it is the sound, it is the message of the Prajapati to all the human beings to remember the message of Daya, Dhamma and Dhanam. With that, let us conclude the session with a Shanti Mantra. 
ಪೂರ್ಣಮದೂರ್ಣಮಿದೂರ್ಣಾತ್ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಾವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ ಶಾಂತಿ ಶಾಂತಿ